So then we consider it a privilege to gather as a family to listen to God's word. Just like those Greeks who went to Jesus and not, not been able to meet Jesus, they said to, P, to Philip, please help us, we wish to see Jesus. And Philip met Andrew for assistance. Both of them went to meet, to meet Jesus. I am thinking that we have come in the same sentiment, the same desire to meet Jesus. If we had listened carefully to the first reading from the book of Jeremiah, we would see what Jeremiah said. But for us to for us understand it very well, it's good to put us in context. It's good for us to understand that God has great concern towards man. God loves man. Now you would understand that when he created man, he says he's very good. Other ones he was creating things where he was creating, he was saying they're good and good and good. But when he created a human being, he said this is very good. As a kind of superlative qualification. Man is a cream of creation. And therefore, God entered into a pact, into an agreement, a covenant with man. This is an agreement between the superior and inferior. Agreement between the one who has nothing to offer and agreement between the one who has everything to offer in this, agree in this particular agreement. What God wants for man is just to open up and say, Lord, I accept what you are telling me. Knowing fully well that everything that he has or he does come from God. So he, his, his, what he has to do is submission, total submission, in order to enjoy the fruits of the covenant. God has nothing to, to enjoy in this, in this covenant. Absolutely nothing to enjoy in this covenant, in this pact. Only man is the sole beneficiary of this pact or this agreement or covenant. He began with Noah. When he made the promise that we never destroy this world again by water and gave symbol, the rainbow. He went during the time of Abraham. When he took Abraham from a country of the pagan country, Mesopotamia, Haran particularly, took him away from there and made him a new person and made a promise to him that you and your whole nation that will come from you will be special to me. That through you, you will be instrument in my hand to bring the whole creation to myself. And he made a pact by circumcision. This will be a mark that will make you to understand that you belong to Yahweh. All the male child must be circumcised as a symbol and sign that you are belong to me alone. In this pact, you will gain all truth. It is for your own good. As long as your people will remain faithful to this, this particular agreement, this covenant, you will see Yahweh fighting on your behalf. Many years later, his progeny, his offspring, the children that came out from him, because of hunger and other things, they found themselves in a promise in a land that is not theirs in Egypt. There they suffered. They forgot, almost forgot, forgot the, the Yahweh. Followed the, the pagans to worship their, their different gods. Forgetting the Yahweh slowly. 
a man called Moses came up. And God asked him, go and get my people out. I want to enter a covenant with them. There were obstacles on the way. God spoke ten words to Egypt. Ten words. They failed to, act, to be faithful. The ten words turned into ten punishments for them. God took his people across the Red Sea and put them in a particular situation in order to form a nation out of them. Having passed them from the Red Sea, he created them again. He created them again, just like the creation story, we have water hovering. Passing them through the Red Sea is new, making new creation. But in order to form a nationhood, you need to have a constitution. The covenant, the Ten Commandments. Again, ten words. God gave Moses ten words as a sign of the pact. Showing that these people belong to me. You will practice theocracy, the government of, the, of God, by God, from God. In it, you will enjoy as long as you are faithful to this. But all these covenants are external. They are rainbow, circumcision, ten commandments. You can see them with your eyes. And it's a pact between God and the whole Israel. So individuals will think, those who don't know the law, will say, well, if we fail it, we don't know because only the leaders know it. And eventually they found themselves in the promised land. And God tells them, look, as long as you do not follow the the worship of these gods, people, what people call gods in the foreign land, which if you go to Genesis chapter 1, you will realize that those things they call gods are made by God. That's why God created the light, the moon. They put it there to tell the foreigners that what you are calling God, God, our God created them. Genesis chapter 1. Go and read it very well. But then, the people of God didn't listen they always want to be like other nations. They want to be the, like other nations, which in the plan of God, other nations must be like the people of Israel, like you. People must be like you. People who don't believe in Jesus must be like you, not you be like those who don't know Jesus. But when the reverse is the case, there's a problem. When the people of Israel refused to be faithful to the covenant, the nation divided into two. Division came because devil is diabolos. Diabolos is the devil, meaning the one, the one who divides. Devil, anytime we are not in, conform, in conformity with God, devil will come in to put a division. And once division comes, failure comes. Once a family that cannot be together, devil will come in and make all the whatever you can do not to destroy everything. Because together, success comes. Division comes, no success. Now we have the kingdoms of the northern kingdom and southern kingdom. Ten cities, two cities. Division has come. But God is still faithful to his covenant. Man is fallen and fallen. In the year 722 B.C., the northern kingdom, Isaiah was there with them, telling them, please, even though you have been separating yourself from God, come back again. Please, be faithful to Yahweh so that you will not fall. Be faithful to Yahweh so you will not go down. Isaiah warned them, warned has, ask him even, look for a sign. Give, ask God for a sign, he will show you. Don't put your trust in the pagan countries. They should be like you. Trust in Yahweh. He will save you. Foreign nations will not save you. You, are in, you have a covenant with Yahweh. Be faithful to it and you, he will save you. I, I has and others say, no, 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 no. We must go to this time, this one. Remove God by the, chan, by the hand, by the side. In this one. God is not a part of it. The movie, this is a man to man. Man to man. Of course, man to man. 
with man's weakness, we know that there will be failure. Assyrians come to help, help the, the, the northern kingdom. Assyrians come to help them. But imagine as if you are asked, if you have a problem of security problem, and you go and invite the Fulani headsmen to guard your house. If you have a security problem, you can call Fulani headsmen, headsmen, terrorists, to come and help you to guard your house. You know what that means? Those who have the story of Quara State in Lorraine, we know how they move to they become under, be enter in, in, under the control of, uh, of caliphate. When the enemies come to protect you, sorry, your, ha your, your life is at risk. Assyrians came to, pro to protect them, but only to take hold of them and take them completely. Force them to worship their own gods. As I told my, said to them, I told you, why can't you be faithful to Yahweh? Some people will say, I, we, don't, we, don't know the, we don't know the covenant. We don't know it. Too. We don't know how it is. Okay. Those in the south, the, those in Jerusalem, they were saying to themselves, these people who were in the, who are in the north, they failed because Jerusalem is not with them. We have temple of Jerusalem with us, so nothing will happen to us. This time, a very fine king was there. A king was Josiah, very fine king. Josiah was a very good king who reigned around 622 BC. Very good king. Who went to the temple and discovered a new, a new law in the, in, the, in the temple. What's called today? Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy's second law. It's not as new, but it's seen it in, again. It refreshes the law that was already in the Exodus. And the Josiah want to implement the law by every means so that we, the people of Israel, can we go back to the covenant God has put before them. Unfortunately, he didn't last long. He died so early. Jeremiah warned Joachim to be, be faithful to Yahweh. Be full, but even if the enemies come to invade you, don't attack them. Don't attack them. Just be submissive. Whatever that is going to happen among you, God is in control. Joachim said, no. This one is not, what, don't, tell her, don't say this again. And even, even as if it, it wasn't enough, the priests and the, some prophets who were enjoying the food and drink from the palace of the king helped to get Jeremiah put, put into the dungeon. In the year 598 BC, a few years after, Nebuchadnezzar was preparing for war, threatening Israel, the southern kingdom, threatening them. They didn't care. But exactly 598 BC, Nebuchadnezzar came to the southern kingdom. This time, he didn't touch this temple, but he took the king and his family. And all the so most of the abled men back to the to exile. No more king. The son of jo Joachim became the king. This time Jeremiah warned him. You see what happened to your daughters? Be faithful to Yahweh. Be faithful to the covenant. You don't need to go and fight physically. Be faithful. Even if they come to invade you, don't fight back. Yahweh will fight for you. This one was stubborn. He says no. This time, this time, I will protect my city very well. Where do you get the weapon to protect your city? How do you protect your city? Twelve years after, 586 BC, twelve years after, but this time, Nebuchadnezzar came with all, demolished the temple, destroyed the temple completely, destroyed the Ark of the Covenant, destroyed everything destroyable, the mark of God's presence disappeared. Only those who remained in the land are the anawim of Yahweh, the poor of Yahweh, women and children, and some elderly remained. Jeremiah said, didn't I tell you, faithful to Yahweh can save you. A few years time, some ran away, those who remained, ran away to Egypt, kidnapped Jeremiah with them to Egypt. There, they begin to read the, the prophecy of Jeremiah. They will blame themselves. 
It was in this place now with prophecy we read it today. Jeremiah said to them, Yahweh had decided to do something new. Yahweh had decided to make to write a new, make a new covenant. This one is no more rainbow. It's no more circumcision. It's no more tablets. Something you see external because all these things, physical things have been destroyed. He will write a covenant right inside, inside your heart. Each one will have it inside of him or her. So that no one will say, I didn't know. I wasn't told. I am, I wasn't, I'm not a leader. No, this time inside your heart, you will know God. This is why in each one of us here, we know what is true. Anybody who lies knows the truth. Anytime we lie, we know the truth. But we feel that lie can protect us from certain danger. Therefore, we say what is opposite. But inside of us, we know the truth. Anybody who kills knows that killing is evil. That's why those who kill, they fear death. It's not true. Amen? Amen? Those who kill, they fear death. Anyone who kills, if you see anybody around him who, who is like what he used to do, he'd be afraid. Those, that's why those who kill, they go to have a lot of sham inside their body because they kill. Anything we do wrong, wrong, we know we, we are doing wrong thing. Anybody who commits abortion knows that abortion is killing. But if, he's, if I don't commit it now as a young lady, probably I will not have a chance to go to school. I will not do this. I will not be so beautiful as the way I used to. You know evil. You know it. Anything we do that is evil, nobody tells us whether it's good or bad. We know. Because the law has been written in our hearts. Therefore, to make heaven is possible. Because we know exactly what to do. To make hell is possible because we, we reject exactly what to do. We know the right thing to do, but we say we're not going to do it. Nothing is done by chance. Why? Because the law is written in our hearts. That's why if we read the gospel, I like the beautiful scenario of today's gospel. Jesus went for a feast like every year. If you are 12 years old and a male, a male child, you must go to Jerusalem during this time, Passover feast. You must go. It's a law. And there when he went, we are told some, some group of Greeks, Greek-speaking Jews, came to meet him. They couldn't meet him. But they look for somebody, some people who have resemblance of their name. Because Philip is from the world, from the Greek word, Philippos, lover of house, Philippos. So they felt this is our brother. And Andras, Andres, Andrews, Andrew also can be familiar. So they went to Philip, please, we want to see God, we want to see Jesus. Philip went to Andrew, said, look, can we go together? This is a community thing. But the, the, the Greeks represents all the Gentiles who are longing to meet Jesus. Now, it's very important to, for us to note, to note clearly the, the importance of these two men, and Philip and Andrew, the go-between. And you must try to find how you're going to fit in their shoes. How you can be a go between many people who want to meet Jesus, but you are before them, instead of taking, to, taking them to Jesus, you become an obstacle to them. If you are in line with Jesus, if you are in union with Jesus, you become agent that take people to Jesus. That's why most of the time when we are worrying ourselves, you know that the parents, you have a lot of work. You are to be Philip and Andrew. You are to be the Philip and Andrew that take your children to Jesus. 
You know, sometimes when we come to mass here, we have a lot of some difficulties. We say we see young people that are misbehaving, they are doing this and they are not, you see, they are, they are using their phone during the homely now. They are using their phone during the consecration. They are using their phone. They are, what is happening? The problem is they have no Philip and Andrew as parents. The children you are, great, they are, you are taking care of, you are giving them all that they want, but you don't give them all that they need. Until you begin to give them what they need, then they will begin to have problem. Sometimes we have lacked, we have gone down on our own responsibilities. The children, as they are, as they are growing up, they are looking for the good thing to do. The, what you give them, you give them nice clothes, nice food, take them for, for picnics, do all those for them, they are wonderful things. But what they need, you have not given to them. They even ask you the, the phone. You give them an iPhone, one thousand, one million five hundred, two million. They carry the same phone that you can use. They say if you use toy phone, you can answer call. You use the one uh, iPad or whatever, the one one million five hundred. You answer the same call. You give them, they happy, happy, happy about it. You are giving them all that they want, all that they want, but you don't give them what they need. Therefore, when they come. They come to mass or go to anywhere, they are distracted. They are distracted. Even sometimes parents give their children, little ones, give them phone to play with. You give them phone, put it on for them. They are playing. They are, they are growing in that mentality that when they go anywhere, no matter where they are, they don't know the sanctity of the place. They keep playing with their phone. You are not Andrew, neither you are Philip. Because you have failed to introduce them to what really matters. So when they are growing up, they all grow with a lot of vices. That's why even here in the mass, you see one who's, who is engrossed in the phone, that he's inside, it, he's highly distracted. And maybe a church warden goes to them, to, he will hit the whole church, 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 church warden's hand. Bam! Come on, get away. Did you, are you the one who brought me, brought me here? Yes, it's true. God brought you here. Actually, God brought you here to, to, to make you enter into the new covenant. We have failed in different forms. Philip and Andrew went to Jesus on behalf of this. Which means there are many people who actually desire to know Jesus. You have better opportunity because you come to Mass every Sunday and some others every day. You, have, you belong to different societies. So you have a lot of spiritual benefits, but how do you make use of them? What of those who don't have opportunity? What do you do to them? Anywhere you are, not only parents, anyone who, has, who is in any leadership role, who is playing leadership role, anywhere you find yourself, you are to be that. People must come to you for you to take them to Jesus. If you don't take them to Jesus, devil is standing by. To take them where you don't want them to go. That's why sometimes you'll be wondering, parents are wondering that when, when during our time, during our time, we, we, everything's, we, nobody, everybody, everybody was okay, everybody was religious, everybody, everybody was faithful, but what's going on? What's going on? Yes, during their time, but this is a different time. But you will still see, you, you have the opportunity to still play the role of Philip and Andrew. Start, from, start on time. Start on time. Our young people are getting derailed because parents also are doing the same. You can see some parents who are stubborn also. They carry their phone. They have five of them. That's the time they will have to answer call. They have to play a game. The children are looking at them, watching them, looking. They are learning from you. You are taking them away from Jesus. Who will take them to Jesus if not you? If you go back home, read Deuteronomy chapter 6, from 4 to 7. Deuteronomy, you see the work of the parents. That particular injunction, the injunction there, is exactly why in all the Ten, command, the Ten Commandments, the fourth one that is about the parents are the ones that only the one attached promises. But in order to get these promises, in order to get it fulfilled, you have to fulfill Deuteronomy chapter 6. From 4 to 7, Shema, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. You must love him with all your heart. Then he goes and tells parents, 
make the sure that this law is instilled. Use like drilling machine. Drill it inside the brain of your children. Make them wear it even in the, in the head. Make them wear it like a wristwatch. Put it on the doorpost. Everywhere, so the children will look everywhere they look at. It is talking about God, God, God. Truly, they will never deviate. Then you have family of God. Jesus was very clear. When they went to him and said to him, Lord, they must have told him, the Greeks, who are the pagans, all of us, they want to see you. He says to them something very important. He says to them, the hour has come. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified because the glory of Jesus is a sanctification of man. The glory of Jesus is the salvation of man. Jesus says, it is, this is the time, the time of drawing all humanity to myself, all humanity for salvation, for a new covenant, a new covenant of my blood. This is the time. It's very important for us to know, especially all of us who receive Holy Communion, you are entering into a covenant every time the body of Jesus drops your, on your tongue. And if you are not receiving, I beg you, work very hard to receive. Do not be outside the covenant. Because in the blood of Jesus and body of Jesus, we reenact, we make present again the covenant where we feel one with Jesus. Whoever is my body and drink my, drink my blood, we have life in him. And I will raise him up on the last day. Jesus says it. Jesus enters into covenant with us every day when we receive the communion. And the Sundays, anytime you receive Jesus in the communion, you enter into covenant with him. And once he enters inside of you, you become a completely new person. Your way of life becomes different. We are invited today to understand the, the, the reality of our lives. Jesus wants us to bring people to him. But none, none of us can bring anybody to Jesus unless you are with Jesus. If you are not closer to him like Philip, Andrew, and other apostles, you cannot. And something sweet again about it is this. Do you, in your life, in our lives, are we so attractive that people want to come to us or come to Jesus through us? Have we dis make a proper disposition of ourselves? The way we bring ourselves, in any way we find ourselves, do we, have we presented ourselves to the point that the people who live with you in your family, in the place of work, in the shops, wherever you find yourself, they want to be like you. They want to come to you. You are so easily, you are accessible. Among the, the 12 apostles, but the two, these people find at home, find at home going to these people. Why you are coming to Mass is this. When you come to Mass, when the priest says, it's a Mesa Est, go, the Mass has ended. You become the Mass that outside people will celebrate. Anybody who sees you where you are will feel the aroma of the Spirit of God. There's there the aroma coming from your life. They want to come close. If we, if we, when we're small, when we're very small, now I don't know whether it's happened now. This kind, the kind of oil we have now and the, and the onions is no more correct one. When we're small, when, on Sundays, when the people are frying uh, time for cooking rice too, when, when they put the onions inside the um, oil, the aroma, eh? Hey, you say, oh, these people, hey, they, they're going to eat rice today, oh, I don't know now, I don't even get any smell anymore. I think this oil now, oil now is no more correct. And the onions now is, is, is no more correct, I think. Before, when they are frying it, everybody around will be getting the, 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 the aroma. Or when you are cooking breadfruit, okwa, breadfruit, you are cooking it. People will pass in, hey, keep for me, oh, keep for me. He can't hide it, he cannot. The aroma is going everywhere. This is what we are life should be. Our life should be aroma. Sweet one. We cannot be smelling badly. People want to run away from us. We must smell good. Words, our words must be smelling good. Our life must be smelling good. 
my prayer this morning is that Lord Jesus may reenact our lives. Give, give us newness of life so the aroma he has blessed to us during the baptism may grow and blossom more and more that many souls, many souls after today, many souls will be coming to you, coming to you and say, look, I want to be like you. I want to follow you. Help me. I want to, I want to take some advice from you. If that happens, you are now Philip. You are now Amandru. And when your children come to you and say, Mommy, Dad, I think, help me. I want to grow in faith. Tell me something about heaven. Tell me something about hell. Tell me something about sense. This point, at this time, you're a Philip. You're Andrew. May the Lord help us to be so through Christ our Lord.